Hi. Headphones are recommended to hear the bass of the organ. Uh, we're going to play a D minor blues, um, and uh, or I'm going to play a D minor blues, and um, I'm going to think uh, triadically when I when I improvise, and I'll, I'll 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 explain some of those triads if you're not familiar. Um, um, to begin with, I'm going to be uh, playing with uh, the G major triad sound over the D minor because that gives us. Here's your D. That gives us an 11, a 13, and of course the root. Okay. Two, three. the G. But I'm trying to be as melodic. Oh, hi. I'm trying to be as melodic as possible. Okay, so even though I'm playing triadically, weaving it into mo motives and, and melodies, um, it's all about melodicism and um, building on a, on a theme the way that a good melody would. So, if I played the G very, very, very literally, Okay, there it is. It's just uh, all right over the G. Where am I supposed to look? Hi. Right on the G triad. Now, if I wanted to try to make that sound a little bit more D minor, once I get to the end of that phrase, I could chord it uh, underneath. See? And that's kind of a nice stretch. Uh, be, be careful when you're stretching your your hand, but that uh, is uh, 11, 9, 13, 3. That's a really good sense. You're, you're, you're essentially playing in fourths with a third on top. So I harmonized that note. I could do that too. I could say... And you just want to make it feel as good as possible and then harmonize it. So I'm just going up this scale. <laughs> that is not the, the fingering that I would suggest, unless you're Chico Marx, but... Um, Check out the movie The Big Store. That also happens to be the G7 uh, scale. So anyway, I'm going to keep going. Uh, on that first chorus, I remembered I did a little bit of, uh, let's see, when we get to that G minor, let's see. Before we get to the G minor, see, I can go between two triads here, G major and F major. Of course, F major is just giving me more of my home bass uh, sound, you know, uh, the five, the minor three, and the, and the dominant, and the seven. So, I could go up the inversions as an idea for, you know, uh, for an improvisation. Like that. But again, that can get boring because it's just one concept over and over. So you want to maybe start with that and weave it into a line. Right at the end there, before I went to the G minor, I was thinking, well, if I'm going to G minor, I'm going to think D7 for, for a beat or two. So D7, what's one of the uh, one of the triads, upper structure triads that we can put on D7? It's A flat triad. So I said. So. And that's how I get to that A flat sound. And I just kind of went up in a logical ascending way so it has some kind of uh, logic to it. And then I went to the G minor and we could do similar things. We can apply the, the A minor or the C. A minor triad. See all those triads work. And one thing I like to do that is not very comfortable organistically 
but it's it makes for some cool intervallic playing. Eddie Harris was 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 someone who talked about this to 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 really break up your your triad. So you could say, if we like this, why don't we try something like this? And I put another upper structure triad there over the D. The uh, the B flat. So because that works on a dominant seven, the, the triad built on the flat sixth uh, works as one of the upper structure triads on a uh, on a dominant seven. And that's all I'm going to talk about today. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.